<laughs> I like the sound. I like the sounds of that. Do you like the sound of that? I do too. So follow along. Let's go. Let's get it done right now. Let's go. Let's, let's get it done. Hey, let's, let's go, Junior. Come on, baby. let me show you how to do the dumbbell press real quick, son. Come on here, real quick. Back when I was your age, I used to do dumbbell presses, the big weights. I don't do it no more because my shoulders back there, it hurt. I do my shoulder, and now I can't, you know, I miss my scholarships and stuff. So let me get this big. I'm fooling y'all. All right, so look, we're going to go over some dumbbell pressing techniques uh, that was requested. And we're going to go from floor to core like usual. And a couple of things we're going to start. Shoulder press doesn't have to be. Now, this one doesn't go all the way up, but like there's some benches that will literally be like this, like, like 90 degrees. It's not needed. You can hit your shoulders like this, or even back a little bit like this, right? I suggest, depending on your mobility or shoulder, is to adjust this accordingly for that reason, right? So if you find that you have a hard time externally rotating, and what's gonna help you have a good overall stimulus or pump or activation in your arm is basically being able to do a similar posture as if you were doing a pull-up. What I mean by that is if I'm doing a pull-up, right? I'm gonna be like this, I'm gonna pull my elbows to the side. This is basically a shoulder press. The pull-up is the opposite movement of a shoulder press, right? The tension is different. I'm pulling this way and then shoulder press, I'm pushing this way. But I'm virtually doing the same thing. What we wanna avoid is the elbows traveling back like this. And that happens very, very often. For the most part, when people don't have the shoulder mobility, they end up coming down and then they end up like this and pushing this way and we don't get this really clean pressing overhead. The dumbbells allow us to really hit the lateral head of the delt. When we're doing barbell pressing, because the bar is in front of us, the orientation of that, we're gonna get a lot more activation in our upper chest, in our anterior or front delt. And we're still working the side delt as well too, it's just not gonna be as much as if I have the dumbbell here, right? Each one of the dumbbells of weight is sitting on top of my, on my hand, or in my fist basically, and then it's challenging my delt from the side. Depending on how your mobility is, set your thing up where you have a little bit of an incline or this is completely fine. We're gonna do this without any dumbbells right now because just getting yourself in position so you can see Little things that I do to help some of my athletes understand where their body should be, their posture, um, where their arms should be, their, where the dumbbells should be. And when you look at it, and I've said this a few times, more than once, we should be able to act the exercise out or play it out without the actual machine or the dumbbell or the barbell in our hands. What it means is this. If I'm doing a dumbbell press from floor to core, right? I'm gonna have my feet here on the ground. I don't want them out like this. I want them to be in a position where, so I can press with like, I kind of look at it like there's a kinetic, there's a connection from the ground that when we're in a good position, when we're pressing, we get that help all the, all the way through. Out here, I don't have that. Here I do. So if I'm here and I have to press myself, I do have a little bit of pressing that can help. Now you're not gonna be standing up when you're doing the press, but we wanna be stable from floor to core. So my feet pressing into the ground is pushing my butt back and keeping everything based. I don't want this to be kind of relaxed while I'm pressing. So from floor to core from here and here, my dumbbells are here and I've pushed myself back. I'm already active. Slightly, I'm not driving my feet into the ground. I'm doing just enough that my quads are engaged a bit. I'm creating a nice stable base. And this is what's gonna help you push. So do not forget about the bottom half of your body. So now the dumbbells here and here, right? I always like to get my clients to make a thumb, make a fist like this, right? This is gonna be basically, this is gonna represent the dumbbell, right? This is gonna be the, the bulge of the dumbbell, the bell, the dumb, I'm pretty sure that's the bell of the dumb. Your thumb represents that. When we're here and we're acting from the ground, we're gonna kind of kick one foot up and we have it here. We kick the other one up and we have it here. That's what we wanna do, we wanna set these things up. Now we're here, we're gonna readjust our feet, put ourselves back, and then we're gonna open ourselves up slightly. Now, from here, if you look at where my thumbs are, hey, let's give myself a thumbs up from the side. Why I'm doing this is because I want you guys to understand that I want to keep the dumbbells parallel. The big problem we have with most of the time when people are pressing is a few things. Number one, 
their, their inability to be able to actually externally rotate. External rotation is basically going this way. Internal rotation is going this way. So most part people can't externally rotate as much. So they have this kind of thing going like this. And then at the same time, their wrists are doing this or this. Most of the time it's like this and their thumbs are kind of putting this way. And then what happens is, is like when we're using dumbbells, dumbbells, free weights rely solely on gravity. The only way this is challenging is if it goes up and down, there's no other way. If you drop a dumbbell and it goes sideways, you're not on earth. And you better report back to wherever you're at and let them know that, hey guys, we're not on earth. When it comes to gravity, if my arms are like this, where do you think the tension is gonna go? You're automatically gonna do this. So when you're pressing, sometimes we get a little bit of this and trust me i see it happen all of the time right we have to take total control over our body because if we don't our body is going to do whatever it needs to do to get this weight up the body doesn't care how efficient you are in the gym let me give you an example if you fall off a building and hopefully you don't fall off a building or just i'm just like, don't fall off a damn building. Let's say you fall off somewhere and you got a hole on to something and you're like, bam, you grab and you're like, boom, like this. And you're like, oh my God, I'm falling, whatever. It just sucks when I fall. You're just going to pull yourself up. You're going to, it's going to be an ugly way up. You're going to get your ass up. You're going to pull yourself and that's it. Your body's not going like this. Shoulders back away from your ears, chest up, right? Then pull yourself up perfectly. It's not, right? Fight or flight happens. It's like, get this weight up. Get this weight away. Get this weight off. That's all it thinks. And if you don't control yourself, all your body wants to do is get that shit away from you, is get that stuff away from you. It's heavy, it knows tension, and that's it. You have to take control over how that tension is being moved. When we're here doing our press, we want to press overhead while keeping our shoulders down. So when we're pressing thumbs up, we want to keep these things parallel to the ceiling and to the floor and coming down, right? So let's do this with some dumbbells. We got our dumbbells, floor to core. We're gonna kick her up, one side. Then the next, if you're by yourself, you're gonna set yourself up again. Set yourself back. You can adjust your hands if you need to. I sometimes have to, because sometimes for some reason I feel something not the same and I wanna be, be symmetrical from both sides. So now that I'm here, I'm gonna open up slightly and engage my chest and keep it up. Now these things are kind of resting on my shoulders, but more so from the posture of my chest staying up. I don't want to be like this. And the big problem when we're doing presses is that we have this very weak posture. In all lifts that you do, you need to be like this. In all lifts you do, you need to be like this. Not this. When I'm pressing, look at the, the way my shoulder is. If I do this, and I'm pressing, look where my body is. But if I do this, look at what happens is the orientation of my shoulders. So when we're kicking the dumbbells up, kick, reset, open up, chest is popping up from here. Basically shoulders back with me ears, chest is up high. When we press, I want you to think that I'm pressing to keep that thumb or that straight dumbbell is by having the pressure pushing from the outside of your hand. So basically this part here, there's pressure on this part bouncing and pushing it in. Cause you look for the most part, I can't, I can't really take my hand and, and really make it go this way, but I can definitely go this way. So if I put a little pressure from here, pushing basically from here to here, when I'm pushing up, it's going to help keep the dumbbells flat. Chest is up. I have that weight from here. You see my wrists? Now they're here. Now when I'm pressing, deep breath in, we're pressing up. Shoulders are gonna stay down, Like right? We're basically in a hang, but the chest is staying up, keeping the shoulders down. On the way down, opening up, I wanna almost open my chest up like I'm doing a pull up. And then I'm getting a nice stretch from the bottom from here. And then pressing again and then coming down and then I'm thinking about doing a pull up. I'm pulling myself up, my chest is up, all the pressure is almost on the outside of my hand, pushing and making things, making the dumbbells nice and flat and parallel and then pressing again. We don't want to come down to here 
and press up. And we don't want to come down to here and press out. We want to come down, stretching the chest, putting pressure on the outside of the dumbbells from here, and then pressing up, controlling the weight down from here and pressing up. You want to get to the weight to come down and pause for a slight second, get the full range of motion. My shoulder would now have a great burning sensation and then pressing and then continue as such. When you're doing this, again from floor to core, make sure that you're using weight to start off to make sure you get your body used to doing the actual movement. Don't grab a weight that's too heavy. And when it comes to like shoulders, I feel like, I think most people can agree. It's one of those muscle groups that we don't have to go to that higher end of the one rep max percentage for hypertrophy, meaning you can build muscle anything between 30% to 85% of your one rep max. So if you look at shoulders, I don't need to put 85% of a load onto my shoulders to build my shoulders. I can go somewhere in between like a 50 to 70 ish. And that could be like for me right now, like I would say a hundred pound shoulder press for me would be getting close to that 90%. So for me, it's going to be around like a 50 to 60 pounds that I can take for a long duration where my shoulders are going to get all of the attention and I'm not going to feel like crap in the joints. I don't want my shoulders. I shouldn't finish a shoulder workout and feel like the bone part of it feeling bad. I should walk out of a shoulder exercise or a workout feeling a pump much like a bicep. My shoulders should feel like they're just pumped and sore in the muscle, not sitting in the joint. So make sure when you're doing these to start off at a smaller weight, a lighter weight that you can control, that you can rep over and over again and just get better and better at your technique going through the full range of motion because we want to be strong from the full range of motion. Mobility is defined as a joint or a muscle being able to travel through its full range of motion with ease. You should be able to go from here all the way up and controlling it all the way down. So do yourself a favor, study this video over and over and over again. Make sure you're pressing into a mirror so you can match the sensation with the visual. You can see what it looks like and you can see what you're feeling and then you try to replicate that over and over and over again. I can promise you guys, you'll be able to change the shoulders to the best of your ability and build good, healthy shoulders. One more thing, when we're eccentrically loading or when the load is coming down, what I want you to do is one of the most important cues that I like to give. And this is, we're going back to our feet. Kick them up, get myself set, open up, pressing up on the way down, when I lower the weight, I'm actually putting more pressure into my feet on the way down. It's absolutely crazy and I want you to try this. Grab a weight that you can control and literally on the way down, simultaneously while the weight is coming down, I want you to press into the floor while you're doing it and you will feel the connection from the floor right to your hands, right to the dumbbells and you'll have that much more control. Try it and let me know how it goes in the comment section below. <laughs> anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and share. You know, become with that tuck. It is transparent, vulnerable truth. And for coaching, johnsheath.com. If you want to know more about my coaching, guys, book yourself a one-hour video console with myself. We talk about training, nutrition, supplementation, or mental health. And then the console, I deduct 100 bucks off any package that you pick. Also guys, hit the description below for those discount codes and promo codes that will save life or change life for the better. Like my three, four, five day splits, my push pull legs training ebook, part two, 2.0, the final diet and much more. Also guys, join my Discord group or my school community group where I have all the material that I've created and am creating free for you and weekly AMAs. Anyway guys, make sure you guys add me on TikTok and Instagram. Send me your progress pics, your training pics, and your video clips and I'll repost it for you because you know how it is. Iron Chef is Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing.
greatest.